What's going on guys? Jeff here for Corals Unlimited. Today we got a brand new video for you. We're going to be taking a look how the cycling is going with the nano reef tank that we've been working on here on the channel. But before we jump into any of that, if this is your first time being here, this is where I talk about everything reef tank related. So if you love reef tanks like I do, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell so you can be notified every single time that I upload a new video. All right, so the nano reef tank has been up for about two weeks now and not a whole lot going on. We're still maintaining relatively low salinity. Uh, we're somewhere in the neighborhood of like 22 parts per thousand. And we've talked about it on previous videos, but ultimately uh, maintaining a slightly lower salinity when you are cycling a reef tank will help speed up the process of cycling the tank because the bacteria that you're trying to grow in the tank isn't spending as much energy in maintaining its cell shape as it is in reproduction and producing more bacteria and more bacteria equals a faster cycled tank. Now we're going to go through and do some testing to see where we're at with the tank, but I'm starting to see some visual cues that the tank is cycled. And what some of these visual cues are is the growth of diatoms forming on the sand bed. Now there's not a ton of it yet, but you can kind of see this little bit of rust forming on the sand bed. And I know it's kind of hard to pick up with the camera, but I'm gonna to have to go ahead and take this handle of the scraper and drag it across. And you'll see that the sand underneath is a bit more white. Um, so that tells me that we're starting to get some diatoms in this tank and that's generally a visual cue that the tank has completed its cycle. Now at this stage it's really important to make sure that we do uh, one thing but before we get into that let's go ahead and test the tank and see where we're at. So we've talked about this on previous videos um, using the API uh, test strips. Now Years ago, if you would have asked me what I thought about these, I'd have been like, yeah, you know, there's not much of a, a place for them, uh, for me anyways, within, within the hobby. Um, but I've, since owning the store and working with these a little bit throughout the store, I've found that they are actually uh, beneficial. And, and in the beginning stages, as far as um, testing for the ammonia cycle um, and seeing where you're at, it's very valuable for that. So um, we have the five and one. So this one does uh, general hardness, uh, carbonate, pH, NO2 and NO3. Uh, in this circumstance, we're more interested in the NO2 and the NO3. And then they also have their ammonia um, as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and uh, test both of these and see where we're at with the nano tank give them a couple minutes for the color to develop. And even though that I haven't liked these in the past, I will still agree with myself in the sense that um, these are not a form of testing that you're going to see the levels of whatever it's listing off. This is more of an indication that NO2 and NO3 is present as opposed to um, not being present. So. Um, what is it? 10 seconds. I just says swirl two times. So we're just going to swirl it. One, two, three. Let that color develop for a couple seconds there. Getting low on the ammonia and I just threw it on the ground. All right. Then we're going to test the ammonia. One, two, three, four, five on that one. All right. So it's been a couple minutes and I'm not really seeing um, any color that would indicate that, I'm holding that backwards, uh, that would indicate that the tank has cycled at least with the five in one. And then to be completely honest with you, we're down to the last one literally with the ammonia. And it did have a little bit of color even before I put it in the tank, but there wasn't much of a change. So that that's kind of what you get with the API stuff. Um, so not really seeing much, but we're seeing visual cues in the tank that are indicating that the tank is cycled. So we're gonna take this one step further, and bring out the big guns, and we're gonna use our HANA Marine Master to test both the ammonia and NO3, because we don't have the NO2 
in there. So what I like about this product is it kind of does a lot of things. Some of the things you have to buy different reagents for to get them to work, and then you can use your phone. It can track the progress. Um, it is pricey. It's not, not cheap by any, any stretch of the imagination. But we're going to select our what we're going to test. So we're going to do the ammonia, and we have the ability to test for NO2, but we don't have the reagent present. We're just going to do ammonia and NO3. So I still have this in um, the tutorial mode, which it gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to go about um, each test. And I don't have a lot of reps in with the ammonia, so that's going to be uh, beneficial for me. So we went through and got our test results from the Marine Master and I'll throw them up on the screen so you guys can take a look at them. And taking it just for face value, it may look like this tank um, is in a weird spot or that it is not even cycled at all. And I'm going to argue that mostly because what we've seen with what is actually going on with the Nat Reef tank as far as the diatoms growing. But there are some important things to point out with our test results from the Marine Master that can kind of cause a lot of uh, misinformation for folks when they're trying to cycle their own tanks at home. And one thing that you need to take into consideration with any test kit is its accuracy. And although that I prefer uh, HANA products over pretty much any other testing products out there, there is a range of accuracy. And with the ammonia specifically, that range is 0 0.05. So if you're testing with the HANA tester, whether it's the handheld checker or the Marine Master, and you're getting a result of 0 0.05 parts per million, you may have no ammonia present at all. You just happen to have one of those checkers that are on the higher end of the accuracy scale. So that's definitely something that you need to take in consideration when you are looking at your results during testing, not only during the cycling process, but in general. Now, as far as what we got for results with the Marine Master, as far as the NO3 is concerned, that also could fall into that category of its accuracy. But what we're seeing with the tank is diatoms growing and diatoms are not going to grow in a situation that the cycle has not taken place yet. And really the important thing to take away from this is if you are sitting down testing and let's say, you know, we saw our ammonia at like 0.1, that'd be an indication that the ammonia is actually still relatively high in the system and we need to give it some more time. Now we didn't have the reagent to test the NO2 and that's also something to take into consideration. But with the API test strips, we got zero NO2 and we got zero NO3. If the HANA checker is giving us a result of 0.5, there's a really good chance that that is way, way too low of a number for the API to even remotely pick that up. Because if we take a look at it, it starts at 20 parts per million. So unless the tank was really dirty, you're not really gonna get a result as far as the NO3 goes. But same idea with the API test strips, the NO2 measures in 0.5, or at least a grade of 0.5. So that's a little bit more dialed down than the NO3. Now, the important thing to take away from all of this is testing is an incredibly important part of the cycling process and knowing where you stand. And documenting that over a period of time is going to give you the best idea as to whether or not your tank is cycled. I've been doing this for a long time now. I've cycled an absolute ton of tanks. And what I'm seeing based off from not only the testing, but what I'm seeing present in the Nano Reef Tank, I'm gonna go ahead and say that the Nano Reef Tank is completely cycled at this point. Now that's not a blank check for me to go out and just stuff this tank full of livestock. I'm still gonna take it relatively slow. And what I'm going to do next with the Nano Reef Tank is actually add something to it that's going to minimize the ugly stage of the tank because with starting with brand new sand and sterile rock is a really good chance that the nano reef tank can go through a stage that is called the ugly stage and that really comes from using brand new rock and brand new sand now the ugly stage was not something that happened to me with my first reef tank because i used real live rock rock that came from the ocean that was loaded with a bunch of life and i put it into a tank there's probably a little bit of die off during the cycling process, but not only did it help the tank cycle faster, it also gave me the microfauna for the reef tank to have no idea what the ugly stage even was. The ugly stage is something that we have to address unless we're using live rock, which is kind of expensive. Uh, but you can battle the ugly stage 
and reduce the amount of diatoms that are actually going to grow in the tank and also reduce some of the algae that grows by adding copepods to the reef tank. So now that we got the testing done, we know that we're not spiked in ammonia or NO2, and we have relatively low NO3, we're gonna add some pods to the tank to hopefully help reduce the ugly stage of the nano reef tank getting cycled and getting it ready for other livestock like hermit crabs, snails, and fish. All right, so we got some pods from Reef Nutrition here. These are the ticker pods. Um, these are some of my most favorite pods to add to a tank. They're a little bit bigger. They tend to not go into the water column so much and tend to focus more on the substrate and the lower parts of the tank. Um, so even though that this is a good sized bottle, literally all I'm going to do is just pour these guys into the tank and it's probably going to be hard to pick up on the camera but these guys are going to go ahead and swim around and this is just going to add a little bit more of a balance to the system and these pods what they're going to do is they're going to chew on the diatoms make sure that they don't get crazy out of control and also help with the reduction of algae and hopefully preventing us going into the ugly stage. Now for folks that have established reef tanks and want to add some pods to the tank, it's never a bad time to add pods, but if you've got a bunch of fish in your tank, there's a good chance that a lot of them are going to get eaten up pretty quick. So if you want to make sure that you get the most out of your pods, you might want to add them into your tank when the lights are out and the fish aren't really looking for food. Um, some of them, you know, corals will eat the pods just as much as the fish but they're just a great superfood to add to your tank pretty much at any point in your reefing journey. When it comes to cycling your own nano reef tank, you're only really as good as the equipment that you're working with and the results that you're getting from that equipment. So testing is an incredibly important part, but it's not the complete answer. But if you wanna learn more about cycling nano reef tanks, check this video out. I will see you over there.